The Selfish Path to Romance. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com and at amazon.com. Yeah? The owner of it is Roger Enright, one of those self-made men. Stubborn and rich as blazers. It's always safe to denounce the rich. Everyone will help you. The rich first. Yeah! And that's from the Fountainhead. The rich will denounce themselves first. Why would the rich denounce themselves? If they work so hard, why would they put themselves down when they finally reached financial success? Uh, Why are people so confused about the relationship between money and happiness. And with me to discuss this topic today is Dr. Tara Smith. She's a professor of philosophy at the University of Texas at Austin. And Dr. Smith is the author of several books on ethics and a pamphlet, Money Can Buy Happiness. And that's a wonderful pamphlet, a real eye-opener. It doesn't ensure happiness, but it's a wonderful eye-opener. And that's available at Amazon.com or at my website, drkenner.com. And our topic today is about money and happiness. Can money buy happiness? And welcome, Tara. Great to be here. I I love talking about these subjects. Okay. And it's a very confusing one, one because most people think about the new house they'd like to buy or someday dream about a vacation they'd like to take or even on a smaller scale. They want to build a garden, make a, you know, make a beautiful garden for themselves. And they have a long wish list of things they could do if they have more money. But then they're plagued by clouds of guilt, as I I know you've uh, said. Why? Why are they plagued by guilt? Well, because they accept accept contradictory ideas. It seems perfectly natural and sensible and reasonable, as you indicate, to want to make your life better, be it in small ways or big ways, right? As you say, everybody's got a wish list or, you know, boy, if I had more money, I would spend it on sprucing up the garden or taking that vacation or all sorts of things. That seems reasonable. That's what we want for the people we love as well as ourselves, right? Right, right. But at the same time, most people in our society today accept a moral philosophy that says, oh, no, that would be selfish. You need to put other people first. And we hear that all the time. We hear that we're a consumer society, and that's not said with a a sense of pride. It's said with a sense of contempt. We're too materialistic, and that we should be after more worthy pursuits. And what what is that typical view? Well, first, let me just underscore what you're saying. It is absolutely pervasive, this idea. You don't see arguments for the idea that you should sacrifice yourself because it's taken as self-evident. It's just treated as a given. Every springtime commencement addresses at universities around the country, what do they typically, what do the speakers typically call upon the graduates to do? To sacrifice. Now it's your chance to give something back. Now Mm -hmm. it's your chance to serve something larger than yourself and so on. So there's this real... uh, palpable, just taken for granted, moral belief. We see it in Christianity, we see it in altruism of all sorts, of all religious stripes and non-religious stripes, that others are more important than yourself. And that, that's a recipe for unhappiness. To the extent that a person believes that, he's undercutting not only what he might do with his money, but what he does with his days, what he does with his time, and, and you know, he'll, he'll be completely, as you say, racked by not just clouds of guilt, but, uh, you know, a whole storm. Right. When you say the word altruism, you know, most people think of that as being benevolent and kind, and, you know, your neighbor gets sick and you bring some chicken soup over, and yes, you're doing for your neighbor, but it gives you a sense of reward, too, and you hold doors open for little old ladies, and you help Mm -hmm. out uh, you help out a kid who can't go to college, you give them a little bit of extra money, or, and they look at that as selfless, that that's the, what mm-hmm. the giving person should do. And that's, that's what we want to bring our kids up to be, altruistic, mm-hmm. selfless. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you're not using it in that context, are you? No, I'm not using it that way, and I'm, I'm glad you raised that, because I, I think there's a, you know, there is widespread confusion about that. That is, people kind of mash together a few really different ideas, different practices. When I criticize altruism, I'm criticizing the idea that you have a duty to put other people first. You must morally 
sacrifice yourself and things that mean a great deal to you for the sake of other people, even when those particular other people really don't mean all that much to you. Now that, so self-sacrifice is what I'm talking about when I talk about altruism. But we shouldn't confuse, and I think you're quite right, that people frequently, even innocently sometimes, confuse self-sacrifice with benevolence, wishing other people well, and kindness, and sometimes giving to them and helping them. That is, I don't mean simply benevolence as, oh yeah, in my head I'd like it for everybody to be happy. There's nothing wrong, I think, with helping people sometimes, doing something, putting your money where your mouth is or your goodwill is, if and when the person you're helping... Hey, I got to interrupt this because we've got to pay some bills. 30 seconds, that's it. A very quick ad and then Alan will be back. Romance. Ugh, I wish guys knew more about what we want from a relationship. (laughs) Boy, I wish I knew more about what I want. Where's that ad I saw? Ah, here it is, The Selfish Path to Romance, a serious romance guidebook. Download Chapter 1 for free at SelfishRomance.com and buy it at Amazon.com. Hmm, The Selfish Path to Romance. That is interesting. There's nothing wrong, I think, with helping people sometimes, doing something, putting your money where your mouth is or your goodwill is, if and when the person you're helping is somebody who you value. And you value helping that person in that situation more than you value the particular effort or money or whatever it might be that you're giving them. So it it brings you... Is is it a, a sacrifice or not? But I'm all for benevolence. I'm all for kindness and sensitivity to other people's circumstances. What I am adamantly opposed to and what's antithetical to the pursuit of happiness and the achievement of your happiness is... You're putting other people's happiness first. Okay, so if you work really, really hard and a a neighbor has a kid who just could use a little extra help and you adore this child to pieces, you you adore the neighbors and you want to help them out and you take some of your money and give it to them to help the kid, maybe get an operation or maybe go to a school of their choice, that is not what you're considering a sacrifice. You're considering it a sacrifice if the neighbor stole from you or did something terrible to you, and then you feel that, like you have to ha- be humble and have pity on the... On or if it were the, demanded that he has a right to it because he's needy, right? and you happen to have money. Right, right? and that gets that's into it. And moreover, I mean, the, the, the situation you described does sound like it would not be a sacrifice. If I really, as you say, I like this kid a lot. I think he's a great kid. I think he's a promising person, you know. Right. I enjoy his company. I hope he can do well. I realize that I'm in a position to help them out a little bit here. And if I can do that without sacrificing anything that I value more, like maybe my own children or myself. So th- maybe there's something I've been saving up for that's incompatible with that. But, but when, I think this is more the situation you had in mind, when it would not be a loss, but actually a gain for me, for things I care about, including right. this person. Right, the neighbor or whatever. In a material way, that's wonderful. That's so, great. So altruism is self-sacrifice. It will not bring you happiness. And if you earn your own money, you have a right to keep it and to spend it on your top values, which may include other people or may not include other people. And it's been my pleasure today to talk about your right to be happy, your right to earn money, honestly, and then to spend it on your top values. And I want to mention that if you want any information on Dr. Tara Smith, you can get it. She's written several books and a wonderful pamphlet, Money Can Buy Happiness. You can go to Amazon.com and of course you can go to my website, drkenner.com. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Tara Smith. Thank you very much for having me. For more Dr. Kenner podcast, go to drkenner.com and please listen to this ad. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance, the serious romance guidebook by clinical psychologist Dr. Ellen Kenner and co-author Dr. Edwin Locke. 
Understanding where emotions come from will make you a better romantic partner. Anger is your response to a perceived injustice or the violation of some important moral standard by another. You can also be angry at yourself for the same reasons. Guilt stems from believing that you acted against your own moral standards or values. Hatred. A feeling of extreme animosity or hostility toward another person stems from evaluating that person in some way as bad or evil, or as a profound threat to one's illusion of self-esteem. Hatred of others can also be a displacement of hatred toward yourself. Here you urgently need counseling. You can download Chapter 1 for free by going to drkenner.com. And you can buy The Selfish Path to Romance at amazon.com.